Hello, my name is Jared Ludlow, Publications Director at the BYU Religious Studies Center. And here with me is Devin Jensen, one of our editors. And we'll be talking about some resources that can accompany your Come Follow Me reading for January 16th through 22nd, John chapter 1. And the first one is called The Gospel of John, and it's by Eric Kunstman, a religion faculty member here at BYU. And it comes from our volume, New Testament History, Culture, and Society that is edited by Lincoln Blue Mountain. And Eric starts off talking about how many Latter-day Saints are familiar with the Gospel of John, certainly, but may not be familiar with a lot of scholarly issues related to this, uh, such as questions about its authorship, compositional history, and thematic questions. And so he's gonna dive into some of that and help explain that. Uh, but Devin, what is something that stood out to you from this article? Great. Something I love about this article is that it has uh, a good explanation of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and how uh, John has some really helpful uh, descriptions that are that are symbolic in nature in terms of uh, explaining the the symbolism of the word and I am and so forth. So I think this adds a lot to our knowledge of the gospels. Great. Yeah, he certainly dives into the symbolism, the theology, the literary power of this uh, gospel. And uh, I think it also gives a helpful outline of the gospel, breaking it down into different sections. And then, like you said, he talks about the I am statements. He talks about different signs and discourses that John uh, gives related to Jesus. And overall, of course, <laughs> the gospel of John's purpose, and I think what Eric Kunstman also emphasizes, is that this gospel is to lead us to a more abundant and eternal life. The second article is called God Incarnate, the Word Made Flesh. And it's by Jennifer and Keith Lane, who were religion faculty members at BYU Hawaii. And it comes from a Sperry volume. Now in this one, they focus a lot on the divinity aspect of Jesus. The Gospel of John is interesting because it distinguishes Jesus from the Father but also presents Jesus as God, as a God. And it tends to use a term, maybe you could explain it for us, of Christology. Yeah. What is Christology talking about? Christology is uh, how Christ, or the Anointed One, is measured in terms of human terms. So we, we think of Christology as uh, is how divine Christ is and how uh, he reflects the, the Father fully. Good. And so when he's more divine, we call it kind of high Christology. And if it's low Christology, it's more like, you know, somebody who helps heal or prophesy and does things and still is a special figure, but it's low Christology. And certainly in this article in the Gospel of John, generally, uh, it has a lot of high Christology. And I think one of the issues particularly that they uh, undertake and discuss is, you know, we sing the primary song, I am a child of God. But in the scriptures, there's a different sense of this, of being reborn, spiritually reborn, and being sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. Through Christ's divine person and power, we're, we're different sons of God now, or daughters of God. And so they talk about that, and, and meanwhile talk about different aspects of how Jesus is God. Pre-existence, creator, lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, again the great I am, and so forth. Okay, the third article is called John the Beloved, Special Witness of the Atonement by Kent Brooks, a former faculty member here at BYU, and it comes from another Sperry Symposium uh, presentation. And he mentions, and we see this elsewhere in scripture, that the atonement had to be performed by somebody who was sinless, perfectly obedient to, to God's law, unblemished, uh, but second, it had to be performed by somebody who had power over life, and death. And so he talks about how from his mortal mother, Christ inherited the power to lay down his life, and from his immortal father, he inherited the power to take up his life again. And maybe, you know, you can share a little bit at the end of John. Uh, you know, John has a certain purpose, and what can we learn from this? Yes, I, I think the one, one of the things we learn is uh, that John said, these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So we can be blessed by the atonement and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Good. And so yeah, that's Kent Brooks' purpose is to help us uh, achieve the same aim as the gospel, you know, 
of John Ryder that that we can come closer and have life through his name.